welcome you all to our AAPS 128 weekly webinar. It's heartwarming to see a happy bunch of participants on Sunday morning. Welcome to you all for responding to our call and being here. Over the past two years, we have been able to put together online programs to keep our AAPN community not just engaged, but also meet a range of inspiring people who can help shape your ideas and thoughts. AABN has been engaging you with the objective of helping you hit the refresh button on emerging trends on a range of topics. It is extremely gratifying to note that today's webinar is the 128th edition. No wonder we also have an awesome speaker with the fresh perspectives on through this success lens, image impact and influence. Let us extend a very warm welcome to our eminent speaker, Mr. D. Ajit Kumar, to this interactive business networking session. Self-improvement and success go hand in hand. Taking the steps to make yourself a better and more well-rounded individual will prove to be a wise decision. The wise person feels the pain of one arrow. The unwise feels the pain of two. We have heard that it is wise to learn from experience, but it is wiser to learn from the experience of others. We tend to think of great thinkers and innovation as soloists, but the truth is that the greatest innovative thinking does not occur in a vacuum. Innovation results from collaboration. Some of us think holding holding on makes us strong, but sometimes it is letting go that makes us stronger. But what I have discovered over time is that some of the wisest people I know have also been some of the most broken people. To make difficult decisions wisely, it helps to have a systematic process for assessing each choice and its consequences, the potential impact on each aspect of your life. Each of us experience defeats in life. We can transform defeats into victory if we learn from life's weepings. Great strategy and revenue acceleration begin with understanding three things, your customers, competitors, and the strengths of your company that can be leveraged into killer growth. Many systems don't close the loop between creation of strategy, its implementation, and value recognition. In a competitive and unpredictable world, our guest speaker today, Mr. Ajit Kumar, will help us discover how to become a master strategist who creates and captures value. I have the pleasant duty of introducing and welcoming Mr. Ajit Kumar today at through the Success Lens Image, Impact and Influence and Interactive Business Networking section. session. D. Ajit Kumar has a bachelor's degree in chemistry from Royal College and pursued his post-graduation in marketing from LIBA. Has developed cross-domain competencies from his over three plus decades of experience in various industries. To Ajit Kumar's success is a strong suit. Has been the game of has been in the game of sales, marketing, product development, PNL management. Has had several avatars in leading corporates like eMerk, Hindustan Unilever, Kodak, Xerox, HCL, etc., and is currently the group business manager at Reddington India Limited. He is strongly oriented towards sales process, analytical and database environment high performance and people-based approach to business ownership. He has a proven relationship building skills and high ability to sustain a positive work environment, ensuring accomplishment of both organizational and personal goals. His credentials include, he has trained over 200 plus hours to become a professional trainer, a certified coach and counselor, certified in NLP, hypnosis, hypnotherapy, among others, sales trainer, sales coach, and sales consultant. We have taken upon ourselves a very ambitious program for this morning within an admittedly short space of time. I do not want to make the time available any shorter and therefore wish us all an informative exchange of ideas and information that stimulates an appetite for more. With a personality like Mr. Rajit Kumar, you can go on and on eulogizing. But uh, let me keep here, uh, let me stop here and let the audience have the privilege of listening to you, Mr. Rajit Kumar. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Rajit Kumar. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. So we'll do and we will keep it interactive because the subject is such that unless we keep it interactive, we could be lost. Because you might note something and then I may be on some other point. We might miss it out. So I'm okay with you trying to come out with any queries or objections. We'll, we'll go through it. We'll have fun. So how many of you actually believe there is something called as first impression? Probably you can say I or put your hands up. Now let I me ask you, let me ask you a very interesting question. So what is the first impression you had about me? You can be honest, nothing to hide or 
you must have felt something you know seeing me so long the last 5 minutes on the screen so you would have definitely formed some impression about me so do share it let's have fun no problem somebody come on nothing to worry or nothing right or wrong in this people are typing in the messages oh okay and the first slide itself it's different from others a lot of training i attend the first slide itself attracting me okay but about me as a person any you would have formed some opinion this guy, he could be this he could be that because we all do this subconsciously we do it Uh, i'm sure i mean uh, do i have to get a little bit to explain what subconscious conscious is or can i because this entire game is happening in the subconscious mind of forming the first impression okay so i presume that do i need to get into that a little bit please first okay, fine. fine let's very simple See, I'm sure all of you here would be reading self-help books, right? All of us read that. Now, after reading those books, what do you do? You say, "From tomorrow, I'll do this. I will do that. I will be like this. I'll be like that." Right? All of us have experienced it. Yes. Yes. But after four days, what happens? We are back to square one. Square one. Yeah. As uh, as always. that's because what you have read has gone into your conscious mind it has not gone into a subconscious mind and this subconscious mind is a very very powerful one which is active 100% of the times as long as you are alive it is active the conscious mind it works only about 10 20% now just to give you an example as to how powerful the subconscious mind is see when you are traveling from your home to your office or somewhere else you know suddenly your mind will run into so many things and without your knowledge you will suddenly realize that the destination has come and then you will realize that at in about three places you stop the vehicle at the signal you let people cross the road and then you reach there but your mind was somewhere else you were thinking of some meeting or something could be going on some family issues or something it must be running in your mind how did it happen it was a subconscious mind that got you that took control when your conscious when your mind went for a thought process your subconscious mind took control of the whole game so that's how powerful it is so one simple lesson in life life is if you want success you will have to educate your subconscious mind i can give you so many examples like say you are traveling morning 4 o'clock you want to get up you have a flight at 6 o'clock you need to get up at 4 o'clock now you tell this to yourself go to bed keep your alarm at 4 o'clock but to your surprise you would have got up at 3:50 3:55 yourself which you never do in your life but on that day you would have got up so who's working there it's a subconscious mind well if i get into that it's a deep subject so all that i want you to understand is we have a subconscious mind which is within us how we will we tap it will give us more success let me put it like that and that is active all the time and many a times you may not even be aware of it because there is so much of information going to your brain hardly a few of it you are aware of let me give you another example you know the shoulder your shirt is touching there your dress that you are wearing is touching there but your brain never realized it till i told you so the subconscious mind is one place where all your old memories are also getting stored so that's so you have the subconscious mind which is 100% of the time active which is ensuring that everything in your body in your system goes on maybe some other time we can spend an hour or two studying understanding how it relates with your body and mind both body mind relationship is a very interesting subject which we can look in some other time so today coming to our subject the first impression 
in fact you first impression as a term suggests that you have only one chance to make it that's the first impression you have it once and it happens very fast within the first few seconds minutes of you seeing me you had already had some opinion about me and the funny or the crazy part is you know when we form an opinion we look for things that will justify that opinion <laughs> for example today you know very simple if you are people who are a little politically connected you know you are working with a party you know whatever goes wrong you don't see it you only see things that is happening right there similarly that's how the brain is wired so you form a opinion about me that he is for example joyful person you know you look for signals that coming out of me which proves that or from anywhere else if somebody tells you he is a serious person you may not believe it or if I, even if i show some signs of seriousness you will overlook it not you it is we all it is not for somebody alone it is for all of us it happened so that's why it said that it's happened once and it keeps repeating itself to that so the problem with that is it is difficult to change your opinion it's very very difficult almost 75% of the time this first impression lasts till the end and how well you make it how good a impression you give is your game yeah sorry anybody having doubts so please stop me you can budge in any time i am okay with it you can budge and ask me questions i am fine with it because the more interactive it is the more fun we will have so how did i get into this game now you might be wondering who is this guy what is he talking about like you had said i am a full time sales trainer i am a sales coach and also a sales consultant now these are three different games sales trainer will teach you what the sales strategies are sales coach will work with the sales person to tell him show him what he is doing right what is doing wrong on the field a sales consultant is somebody who works out the sales process depending on your industry depending on your kind of clients you have we work out a process so there again i me being a student of nlp and hypnosis sales is a game where it is 70% played in the mind it's only 30% on the field and that's so in any industry even in sports it's very the game is the same if you are strong here yes you go down there and play well if you are weak here yes your game is gone so one of the things that went in was into sales was how to improve the sorry how to improve the communication skills so when you went into the communication skill sorry anybody having a doubt question no okay i thought i heard some noise so when i then got into the game of communication where i started studying how communication happens how it is what it is why it is yes i am a member of toastmasters and psai professional speakers association of india so communication i got in i started studying there a little deep and that's when the first impression came because for us for any of us when you meet somebody it could be your customer your customer can be somebody as an industrialist who buys from us or he could be your banker or he could be somebody who supplies you or he could be your relations or your close friends or family members with whom you have whom you are meeting or maybe in your own industrial circle in your own entrepreneur circle meeting people for the first time because networking is very important as an entrepreneur and how to do a good networking is very important because they could be your unpaid sales people so we will get into that a little later so when you meet them you need to make a good first impact impression on them right are you in line with me yes sir yes so that being the case which is there whether you are an entrepreneur or you or you are in sales you know this is very important so that's how i got into this and like the slide say it is up to you to create that impression other person is not going to do that 
you will have to create it. So that's how I got into this game. Now, there is a very famous theory of communication by Albert Merham. It says that 55% of what of your communication is from your non-verbal, which is your body. 38% is from your vocal tone. And only 7% is from what you speak. So what you speak really doesn't matter much to begin with. So to begin the game, you know, your style is more important than your substance. Let me repeat, to begin the game, your style is more important than your substance. You may say, I have so much of substance with me. I'm a PhD, I'm this, I'm that. But when it comes to making a first impression on you, that doesn't work much. Your style, how you present. We will look into this. 55% of the first impression is formed by looking at your body language. 38% is by your voice, how you speak, the emotions that are coming out of your voice, the loudness, the speed at which you speak, all that matters. And only 7% of the time, people form the first impression by what you speak. So that's why you say in Tamil, there's a saying, Al Padi, Adai Padi. It is in fact 55%. In fact, what are the things that we try to read from a person when we see him? We would try to read what his financial status is. We would try to read what his education is. We would see how empathetic this person could be. We would also see whether he's competent, whether he's trustworthy, most important. We also try to see what could be his native, his caste, what religion he belongs to, which region of the country he is from or where. You know, these are just some of the things. There would be a lot more things which you could look at. Anybody having a difference of opinion? Or are we all in game? Okay, silence I presume is in game. Now let's look at this. See, when somebody walks to you from a distance, somebody new, you know, when he walks in, the first thing at about 10 meters, what talks to you is the dress he's wearing. His hairstyle and how he is walking. These are the three things that catch your attention and you form your impression about the person. As he comes a little closer, which is about five meters away, then his face speaks to you. Not just his face, his whole body speaks to you. How he positioned himself. And at an arm's length, yes, we will see the it in detail. First thing that speaks positive about a person is the confidence. Because you will have to come out as somebody who is very confident. Because by nature, we all like people who are confident. Right? If somebody comes and talks to you, uh, no, you see, uh, who's not very confident, you know, you are not very comfortable speaking to the person. And people who are confident tend to have more friends and move around meeting more people. In fact, confidence comes from self-love. Now, people who are introvert can also be confident. Let's, make, let's be very clear about it. It's not that introverts are not confident people. In, introverts are also very confident people. When you speak to them, you will realize it. So one of the best ways to boost your confidence and boost your self-love is what people do is the mirror exercise. This is a very powerful exercise. Each time you stand in front of the mirror, you just say, I am awesome. I am unique. I have in it me to succeed. Probably say that a couple of times. Each time you get in front of the mirror. Because this was very successfully used by Mike Tyson. Who was always saying, I'm the greatest, I'm the greatest, I'm the greatest. And that paid him off big time. So this mirror exercise is something which has 
been proven to be very, very, very effective. And I suggest you can try this out. Because you're saying to yourself, when you look yourself into the mirror, probably you can make a mark on the mirror. So whenever you see the mark, you can tell to yourself, yes, I am awesome. I am unique. I have a unique success. Say it a couple of times and then keep moving. And then this gets into you. Well, the game of first impression is actually playing to do with more with the psychology of the person. Now, what do you mean by what do I mean by the psychology of the person is all of us want to have be paid attention to. Right? We all like like that. When somebody pays attention to the us, we like it. Even a kid, you know, you keep an eight months, uh, six months, nine months old kid in the cradle, and if three adults start talking to themselves, the child will make noise. Hey, I'm here, look at me. And this attention seeking starts from that early age, and it is there with us all through. So as a kid, what we start at is goes on with us till the end. So the feet, if I'm if you're walking up to somebody, if I'm walking up to you. My feet has to be pointed towards you and my body has to be towards you. Not that I stand like this, you know, and then walk, talk to you or look to you. It simply means that I'm not paying attention to you. Or your, your subconscious mind reads that this guy is not giving me attention. So the bridge is formed. I mean, the bridge is broken. Actually, you form a wall there, not a bridge. The next thing is that talks of your confidence is your shoulder. Because if you keep your shoulder back like this, it can mean you are a little arrogant. Or if your shoulder stoops, it means you are not confident. So it sends a different wrong signal. All that we need to do is keep your shoulder straight, keep it relaxed. Just keep it relaxed. That's all. Nothing else. Palms. This is very important. Because you know, we have this primitive mind with us. In those days, when we when we meet somebody, you know, we were not sure whether that person is safe or not, whether he's carrying some arms which, which will attack us or not. And that primitive brain is still there with us. So first thing we do at that time was to see whether his hands are empty, he's not carrying any equipment and he's safe. And even today, you know, when you show your open palm, people realize that this guy is safe. In fact, if you remember when I first came in, I started waving. The reason why I waved this is to talk to your subconscious mind saying that I'm a safe, nice guy. And this on your Zoom calls or on your video calls, which we'll talk later, even there you can use it very effectively. The next is your chin. Because every body part of you talks to the subconscious mind of the other person, which your conscious mind may not realize, but the subconscious mind, which is very powerful, reads it up. Chin, if it goes up, it gives a different meaning. Yes, shows a little bit of arrogance. If it stoops down, it again means that you are a little wanting confidence. It has to be straight. Once it is straight, it means that, yes, the confidence is there in this person. So all those traits, he's trustworthy, he's empathetic, he can be trusted upon, comes from here. So slides are not moving, sir. Slides are not moving. Nice. Well, let me stop here. Now is it, is it visible now? Yes, yes, it is, it is. So from where it is not moving actually? Right from the beginning. We've been seeing only the first slide that is the heading of this session. That's it. Oh God, okay. I just quickly run it through again. Yeah, that'd be nice. Somebody must have told this. I would have done it other times and corrected it. We thought that first impression in that itself. <laughs> yeah.
here now now you are able to see that chart yes okay this is what i was talking of the barham's principle dr albert barbian which says that 55% of the communication is from your body language 38% is how you speak your voice and your tone and 7% is what you speak so even before you speak 93% of the people have formed an opinion about you so only 7% of the people go by what you actually speak so that's why i said your style matters more than your substance when it comes to forming the first impression you may have a lot of knowledge you may have a lot of things but unless you have the style which will take take you in the first stage only then you can walk to the second stage of showing your knowledge so style matters more when it comes to forming the first impression and things that we look for is the financial status education whether the person is able to take whether he is competent he is trustworthy what could be his caste his native his religion this which region of the country he is from these are things that we want to see the first impression is formed on these grounds there are other grounds also but then these are main things and this is what i was talking of when a person who walks to you you know from a distance of about 10 meters what talks to you is his dress his hairstyle and the way he or she walks i repeat the dress that he or she is wearing the hairstyle and the way the person walks is what talks to you you form an opinion based on on these three factors when the person comes in a little closer his or her face speaks to you the entire body speaks to you so when the person comes to an arms length it is the tonality the voice which speaks to you we'll get into that a little deeper and what they speak to you so what is now this screen is visible now confidence yes yes yeah thank you so what is most important in the whole game is how confident you are when i see you i first notice whether you are confident or not and confidence comes from self love because even when we communicate we like to talk to people who are very confident suppose if i were saying see i am going to talk about first impression this first impression is very important if you continue like this half of you will log out in no time so the confidence is very important how you speak and this confidence comes from self love when you love yourself the confidence comes out more and one of the best ways to improve your self love is this powerful mirror exercise where whenever you are in front of the mirror just say i am awesome i am unique i have it in me to succeed i am awesome i am unique i have in i have it in me to succeed in fact this was very successfully used by mohammad ali the great boxer whenever he used to go stand in front of the mirror he used to say i am the greatest i am the greatest i am the greatest and he felt that vibe even when he was in the boxing ring and that's why he says i am a boxing champion in fact even as recently as a year back the tennis legend djokovic you know he was down two sets he came back to win so first two sets he lost he, he took a break he said i went to the bathroom and i was doing this i was telling myself looking at the mirror yes i can do it i am awesome i will win i can win, I can win. and then he came back and played and he himself told it in an interview If somebody wants i can share that with you so this is very very powerful please try it out and this first impression is purely based on the psychology of all of us because we all love to have attention once somebody gives you attention you love it as a child you know 5 6 years old you sit down you talk to the child child loves it even when it's small about 6 months or 9 months old and even in the cradle you know put the child in the cradle and three four adults start talking to themselves without looking to the child the child will make noise hey i am here talk to me rise in its own way it will give you that message 
so we are playing into that emotion of ours where we want to have attention so the first thing is the most important as you walk towards a person is ensure that your feet is straight pointing at him even when you are close to him ensure that your face your feet and your body is directed to the person this is very important next is our shoulders the place where the eyesight next falls is shoulders shoulders should not be pushed back or brought forward both means that either you are arrogant or you lack confidence so keep it straight be relaxed you don't have to do anything you don't have to rise it or do anything. just be where it is as it is. because in the first impression authenticity plays a big game palms is again very very important because we have the primitive brain with us still active and this primitive brain in those days when we saw a human being or any animal the first thing we wanted to be clear of is that this animal in front of us or this human being in front of us is safe to deal with especially when it came to human beings we ensured that he doesn't have any arms any stone any sharp objects with which he can attack us so that's been a primitive brain and that is still there so today even when you are doing a video conference and the moment you say hi showing your palms subconsciously your sub your subconscious brain immediately reads that this guy is safe he is friendly he is trustworthy the next thing when you are talking to the person is of course your chin ensure your chin is straight not up it could mean a little arrogant if it is down it again means you are not confident so ensure that your chin is straight smile <laughs> the video, this slide is available you are able to see the screen yes yes thank you so smile is another very important thing how you smile and the smile has to be genuine if you just smile for the sake of it like this you know the subconscious mind reads it when somebody genuinely smiles you know you can see from his this part you will find a crow web see there is a string coming here crow legs if that happens that is when you genuinely smile and if you just like that smile for the sake of it the subconscious mind reads that no this is a fake smile he's just smiling that's it and next is maintaining the eye contact look into the eyes of the other person try to see the color of the eyeball but then when you say look into the eyes uh, eyes and smile i don't mean go stare into the eye and then say mm, smile no make it very calm relaxed just don't go stare into the eyes saying that you only told me that you should look into the eyes look into the eye doesn't mean stare just look into the eyes calm peaceful maybe for a minute then you can probably shift and again come back or if the person shifts you also shift i'll tell you why to that later so ensure that you maintain a good eye contact with a nice smile with a straight chin relaxed shoulder facing the person and have you realized that when you meet some of your best friends people known to you well the moment you meet them your eyebrow goes up or somebody you like when you meet them your eyebrows go up is other way around when you don't like somebody you look down like this that's a different game but your eyebrow goes up when you meet somebody that you like the most have you realized that it's a very important study of human nature so you also raise your eyebrows so the moment you raise your eyebrows and look into the person you know the person will will know that this person is happy to connect with you and slightly tilt your head slightly don't tilt it so much but just slightly tilt it it just gives a message to the person yes i am willing to listen to you it gives a message to the other person yes i am willing to listen to you please speak now why that has to be done i'll come back 
Well yeah. done. And you need to lean a little forward just to tell him that, yes, my full attention is with you. Because when I do this in offline, normally the participants practice it and then we go through an anchoring technique so that next time when you meet somebody, you can, you get all this done automatically. But for now, since, or if you want, we can do that. Anybody wanting to do, try it out? Yes, you can switch on the camera and give the facial expression. Anybody wanting to try it out? Because there are so many things that I have said. See, it starts with your eyebrow, rise it, look into the eyes, smile, stretch in, relax shoulder, and you face the person. That's it, so simple. Your face gives it out that you are happy to meet the person and you are there for him. That is all a person needs. When somebody meets you, that's all they need to begin with. That's saying that you are happy to meet them and you are there for them. Somebody whom they can trust upon to be for. That's it, nothing more. Any doubts, any clarification so far? Sir, the head forward you are telling us that. Can you explain in detail how to do? Head oh. slanting. This one, head slanting? Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> if I am a new person, if I am meeting, this is what I have to do. Just slant your head slightly to your left or right. You want to do this, you do this experiment with a small child. You know, a child is supposed to be the father of man. And child till the age of five is mostly in his subconscious mind. I'm sure most of you are aware of this fact. That is why they said, give me a child, I'll give you a gentleman. Because the child till the age of five, the conscious mind is slowly coming up, but it is mostly on the subconscious mind. Uh, in you, look at the child, you look at the child, you just slant a bit and talk to him. He will feel that you are somebody who loves him a lot. Because this basically sends the signal to the other person, you please, I am willing to listen to you. The signal that sends it is that I am willing to listen to you. Yes, sir, you are telling something else. Sorry. So you are saying something else in between? Gopi, Gopi, you only, Gopinath. Any other doubts or anything? You're telling something else. That's why I just wanted to check it out. You're muted, sir. If, if I am you? meeting the superiors the first time, that time can, and the slanting head, can I perform? Oh, yes. Okay. Slightly okay. slanted. You don't slant it fully like this. Just okay. slightly slanted. That's all. It is just a okay. slight slant. Right. Right. Because even a superior, you know, he, as a human being, all of us have that wanting. And the superior wants it more because his ego is there for him. So even if you're meeting a superior, his ego also has higher that he has to be recognized. So it's all the more important that you do it. Thank you. Sir. And Thank you. And a leaning forward will definitely help you further on this. You won't have to bend so much, but then you can just slightly have a small bend. That's all. And you can either give a shake hand or you can do a namaste. Because if you are on your, sometimes some people prefer this namaste, some people like to do a shake hand. It depends on the kind of culture and where we are. Now, when you are shaking hand, you know, if you want to build a rapport, which will come to, you offer your hand and shake hand the way the person shakes hand with you. If he's holding it tight, you also hold it tight. If he's holding it loose, you also hold it loose. You don't try to force him to say that, yes. You just shake the hand the way the person does it. But there's a science behind it. I'll come to that a little later. And in the Indian context, especially, if you're shaking hand with a person of opposite sex, ensure there's a full arm distance. Both of you are at a full arm distance. So 
so that you are far away from the person's personal space. So they don't feel intimidated by you. If it is the same sex, yes, you can go till half your arm. This, this distance you can. That distance you can maintain because you are at the boundary of his personal space. To the same sex. So that is something you need to have in mind and. Here one question: Whether yeah, how, sure. to, whether how to wait? They have to do the handshake first, or I, I have to start first. There are new persons. Ideally, it is you who should give a hand first, because the person who gives it first has the power. Okay. Okay. Great. It's very simple. The, if you can imagine that when you go, somebody shows their hands at you, you feel you have to give it because he has got the power with him. So similarly, you it is you who have to we who have to give us a hand first because we take the power on us. And the first few statements, you know, has to be positive. Has to definitely be positive. Nothing should be negative here. Be very clear about. It. Give a compliment. Give some compliment you like. Like. A couple of months back, I was in a collectorate in inside Tamil Nadu, beautiful building. You know, I was with my colleague, with with my friend actually. We went, we met the collector, and the first thing we told the collector is, sir, you got a beautiful office. Your toilet is also very clean, which we never expected, and he was very happy. In fact, the business that we went for got closed within half an hour. Although people say it will take three days, five days, but the whole thing finished in half an hour. So give a compliment. Either compliment is dress, because as human beings, what do we love? We love being recognized, right? The same principle, saying I'm giving you attention, I'm giving you compliment, is what it makes you feel happy. You try this with anybody, they love it. Give them a compliment. Say your dress is nice. In fact, uh, I had a lady with me in sales. Whenever we go out on calls, you know, when she meets a lady, she immediately say, "Ma'am, your sari is nice, your chudi is nice." Even though she must be meeting her for the third, fourth time, but then that's how they build their rapport there. So when you give a compliment, or you say you have a beautiful office, in fact, one of the MNCs I went, very rare MNC where people all were wearing ties, everybody in the office. So I told him, nice to see an office where people are wearing in ties, and everybody has the ties matched to the dress. You know that GM felt very happy. So you will have to start with a compliment. That's it. Compliment something. End of the day, you know, as a human being, if somebody compliments you, somebody gives you a gift, you love it, right? We all like it. So same thing means to the other person. He's also a human being like you and I. And this is a very important lesson we teach in sales that don't get overwhelmed by the customer. He can be anybody. He can be an IAS officer. He can be a CEO. He can be the prime minister president. End of the day, he is also just a human being like you and I. He has got the same likes, wants like all of us have. So nothing to worry if he is a senior guy. He is a, I mean, a very senior person, a prime minister or the president. Or, in fact, I remember uh, an interview by our present prime minister. He says, I made it a point. Whenever I go abroad, I meet heads. I will look into their eyes and speak to them. It is a conscious decision I took and I'm doing that. And today that is paying off. So, that is. So, any doubts so far? Any questions? Because these are things as entrepreneurs, we need to practice to keep because you need your bankers, your customers, your buyers to be very happy with you. And many of them you'll be meeting for the first time. And unless you crack in there, you know, once you crack in there, it, you can take it long easily for you. So any doubts? Uh, sir, is the hashtag matters about the hashtag? Huh? Hashtag, hashtag. Hashtag, yes, it does matter. See, the first time when I see you, when you see somebody <laughs> with a dirty hair, what I, I mean, I, I, I'm coming to that. 
what happens what is the impression you follow over impression that's exactly what happens because this is not something that you know other person even we <coughs> this is something which we practically experience maybe we are not consciously looked into that but unconsciously it has been happening to us okay i will come to the don'ts because these are all do's which you are talking of okay so when you speak don't speak very fast because when you speak fast you know people will think oh this guy has gone is not confident same thing even if i speak very slowly people will think that i am not confident so speak at a moderate pace at a moderate volume even if you speak at a high volume to begin with people will be distracted you know their focus on you will be lost so speak at a normal volume and at a normal pace to begin with because then at the rapport building then you may have to change it which we will look at later and vary your voice intonation you pauses some places where you want to give emphasis speak strong there speak loud and speak strong some places you can go slow you can give pauses because you know this is very important when you uh, when you want the other person to remember what you say very very important this when the person has to remember what you say this voice intonation plays a very big key like i'll give you an example this was done uh, we were doing it two days back and i made a statement wherever you go you will be horrible because you are there because you are there with the same mindset when i wanted to emphasize the word mindset so i gave a pause and then said mindset slowly so that people listen so this varying the voice is very very important and most important especially people who are in sales don't keep talking don't chatter unnecessarily because you should not be saying yeah i know i am this 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 i am that because the other person end of the day when what are you and i interested in we are interested in what is in it for me right i don't care what you do how you do what you do does it benefit me what is it in it for me is what i look at so don't chatter unnecessarily and this is another important thing when we talk we may not know what to speak sometimes don't use filler words like ah uh, mm u mm. you know which in toast masters is looked into very seriously avoid those one thing you can do is you can give a pause no problem just give a pause and then speak so at that pause that few seconds you can recollect what you want to say and don't give too many pauses that again doesn't sound good and most important no jargons because if you use too many jargons when you talk the customer will not be comfortable talking to you but yes here again you need to use jargons which the customer uses for example you go to a <coughs> a telecom industry you are talking to a the person there they will use the word arpu a r p u average revenue per user there to them you can go and talk arpu but if you go to an insurance company and say arpu they will look at you what is this so don't use big long words just to impress that i i know english that's why i said you got to be authentic so people like people who are authentic so be very authentic there so don't you don't use too many jargons and listen more speak less this is your steven covey's i think the fifth principle understand to be understood listen to people understand what they are saying in fact this plays a big game when you are networking also because when we do social networking especially when we meet entrepreneurs in a group or we do this what happens is that we tend to go say yes i am doing this i am doing this i am doing that that business give you a card you are probably not even bothered what the other person says you buy take his card and move to the next person which is wrong 
you need to spend whenever you are doing a business networking ensure that you spend at least 5 minutes with that person so that the vibes get exchanged minimum vibes should get exchanged only then when he takes back he looks into your card he'll remember you so you understand what he's saying you probably try to add value and then say what you can what you offer he'll be more than happy to listen to you only then that's why steven kavi clearly put it understand to be understood well any question so far we will look at online what is the first impressions how do we do it ajit is there any way for uh, while giving business cards yeah is there any practice that you can recommend anything you can suggest how it can see, be made more presentable see one way is you hold the card in both your hands and give it one the top end so that the person receives the bottom end from there with both the hands so that shows the respect some people immediately note down the date and keep and then one of the best thing you can do is take the card look at his name say let me put a simple case like say narayanan <clears throat> no immediately say i had a classmate by name narayanan who was my best friend or my cousin who's my best friend is his name is also narayanan try the relationship and say he is somebody whom i love with the same name you can see the relationship going through a different platform thank you this is a very simple trick but that it impacts very well very hard thanks ajit thank you any other questions doubts Uh, i think uh, uh, the one quick uh, sharing is you know i think the gentleman before that asked you know how to give the card or when to give the card uh, any a brief uh, so should we you know uh, volunteer and give the card first or uh, we should wait for the other person to ask the card and then give it yeah the people generally may not ask for the card generally in our indian society we don't have the habit of asking for a card not many people have it but it is always better that we give the card so that it remains with him and then he will also give his card once you move forward because it is like this once you shake hand you give your hand first the power is with you mm-hmm. similarly when you give your card first the power is with you got it thank you you are making the move and then he moves so it's always better you give the card first any other questions any clarifications or any queries because offline we generally have a practice session happening on this on all of these because what we do is we first ask people to come group of 3 one becomes a client one becomes the person who goes and third person shoots on his camera so how he walks up says hi to the customer it is recorded and then he goes back and he watches it then after this then he makes his corrections and then we do it so that you know it doesn't happen overnight but then at least we are conscious that these things we should do when we meet somebody and we start taking the right steps but being yeah, offline uh, one doubt here yeah sure uh, the confidence level you told so, uh, yes, can i call the superiors by their name in the meetings the first time or the sir which is which i will call which will give the confidence level see uh, more than confidence level psychologically we all like somebody calling us by name okay we love it when somebody calls it by calls us by our name but in indian culture sir is very popular one of the things that some people have started using is now using the name like babu sir regu sir narayan sir ajit sir that is one way in some organizations <coughs> even in some indian companies it is very strict that you cannot call your boss sir 
you will have to call him by name only so if that is a thing please add mr mrs whatever it is okay 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 thank you agreed mr gopinath agreed mr babu agreed mr regu agreed mr rajesh so that you know gives them that respect and they also like their name being called great great thank you sir i have a question on uh, impressing the uh, customer who is not interested the first time or or he is not showing interest this is when it comes to sales right yes sir kind of yeah see <clears throat> okay when it comes to sale the customer the moment you walk in or a sales person walk to you we all have that persistence in us mm. right saying that this fellow is coming to sell to me you know the interesting fact is that in life i mean we all human beings our brain is wired in such a way that we like to buy we all like to buy so many things buying is something that we love all of us like it but the catch is we don't like to be sold to you know the moment a sales person comes you feel that this fellow is trying to come and sell something to me you may not be against the product that he's selling but oh god this fellow salesman he's trying to sell something to me that wall you build so what are the things that we train i mean in my training sections i do with the sales people is when you meet the customer for the first time after you shake and give him a compliment by then he comes down a bit you tell him sir i'm coming from so and so organization now i am not sure if we can do business be very clear sir i am not sure if we can do business let me understand how you do what you do and then if we can help you out fine or let's be friends the moment you use this statement in the beginning the wall cracks down instead the bridge will be formed so that's how you break that wall because this is human psychology i mean we all have that wall am i is it okay or have i answered your question yes sir yes sir thank you any other doubts or any anything else for clarification because there is something on this topic there will be lot of doubts coming in lot of clarifications asked because these are things which we do subconsciously yeah good morning good morning this is radhika yes ma'am Uh, i had a query uh, like when you are walking down a customer is standing say around 2 to 3 meters away from you and you are just walking down he is waiting for you so what yes. is the body language to be maintained like you should look at the customer and walk or uh, yes. you should look here and there and walk and uh, that maybe you can throw some light on it i really look at him because the human psychology is i need attention you must pay attention to me that is a human psychology So you look at him, walk, don't walk very fast. So he'll get scared. Don't walk very slow. That shows that you are not confident. Walk straight. Walk brisk. When I said face, he, your feet facing him, is that you walk to him straight, brisk. Don't be too fast. Don't be too slow. If you walk too fast, he may get scared. If you walk too slow, he'll think that what is this fellow? What is this person walking too slow? So that let that energy be there in you. Show that the energy walks up to him. Because at the end of the day, you know it's your energy that has to go into him, or the other way around. The vibe has to flow. So look at him straight, and then with a smile walk. Okay. And what should be the position of the hands if you are not holding anything? Keep it straight down. My shoulder is down, right? Don't right. hold it. don't do this don't fold your hands like this or don't do keep your hands walking just keep it down relax normally how you walk walk is it good to keep it uh, hold in the back no never no okay because like i was telling you, you know the palm when i showed you the palm you know our primitive brain is such that we think when you see a person we he should be safe so the palm is open safe shown to us we think yes he is trustworthy he is likable So if you keep your palm behind and talk, 
I mean, you can try this experiment with with your colleagues or with your friends. Just keep your palm back and speak. They will be extremely uncomfortable talking to you. Okay. So keep it out. Keep it there. Walk straight. Walk casual. That's all. Nothing to feel nervous about. Okay. Thanks. Uh, sir, you told the body language uh, in front of the seniors while I'm speaking. The uh, the palm actions can we show or not? Any actions? Yeah, you can just move your body. Show your move your hands like this. No issues. Okay. Okay. You can move. So like I've been doing it. So you can you can move your hands. Absolutely no problem. Okay. I mean, movement has to be good. You cannot show actions which are you no know, offensive in nature. Don't do that. But when you talk, hand movement just as is normal. Do it. Because people, you have seen that fifty five percent is body language. Maram's theory. Fifty five percent is body language. So hand movement is perfectly all right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other queries? It is not exactly a query, but I think uh, the sequence you mentioned is you know do the ice breaking, then you do the you know uh, rapo building. Then uh, the amateur model is actually you know going to start explaining you know the product and so on and so on, and uh, we try to you know push for a sale or a close it. But what I understood is, you know, uh, the professional model is make give a elevator pitch, and you yourself do the, you know, you say, sir, 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 I'm in, a, I'm busy, I'm actually going out for another customer or whatever, right? And you actually create that interest and leave it. So uh, technically, what happens is, you know, that person now found something so interesting in you, he does not want to leave you without taking your card. Or you know, next meeting. So he goes on. Uh, he goes ahead and asks for the card, or he asks for an appointment. You know. So we need to drive in such a way. The elevator pitch has to be so effective that he asks for the next meeting, or he asks for the demo, or uh, you know, the following action. So what is your views about it? Yeah. Yeah. See, what you said is right. But the elevator pitch will come only if you understand what the customer needs. How your product matches with this? That's why when I when I told the you no know, when you go on a sales call you say I'm not here to sell, I want to study what you have. So you go for example you go to industry you know what they require how they require it because at the end of the day the customer is looking for only one thing, W I I F M. What is in it for me? He's not bothered what you sell. He's not bothered what you are, what you do. This question is very simple. What is in it for me? So if you know that, and you put your pitch around it, saying that this is what I give, this is what I help my customers. So instead of saying that I'm a sales trainer, I say I help sales people meet their sales target and help companies double their revenues. The game is different. If you are my Thank customer, you. I'll probably tell you that language. But when I come to you, probably when you are not my customer, I'll say, "Okay, I'm a sales trainer." So similarly, when you are networking, you know, instead of saying, "I sell, I do this, that," you can say, "This is how I help my customers." Your pitch to your people should be from your customers' point of view. You know, recently I met a person. What he's doing is he's selling tiles and bathroom fitment. Very simple. What he says. You know, I give you a happy environment, a peaceful 15 minutes of life every day. That's what he says. I give you a beautiful environment for 15, 20 minutes every day. So then you ask where, what? So then he says, yes, this is what we give. So Very it depends nice. how you package it. So what do your customer want? Today, who doesn't want 20 minutes of peaceful time? With yourself, right? So it depends how you package. So you will have to package yourself that way. Only then the customer will get interested in you. Thank you, sir. Right, sir. Any other queries? 
Ajit, if you can give me two minutes, I'll just give a small anecdote, which yeah, happened sure, in the life sure, of one of you. Sure, sure. Not more than two minutes. Sure. So this happened in the life of a great Tamil Tata who was another year. He wanted to learn Tamil. There was one Tamil scholar at that time, maybe around the change in the area. His name was Mahavidwan Meenash Sundaram Pillai. Somewhere in beyond Thiruvayar. So he goes and approaches him to take him as his student. He bluntly refuses, saying, my hands are full. I got the entire, the entire class is full and there is no way that I can take you. So he goes home dejected. But slowly, he develops a strategy. After a couple of months, he again goes back, not to meet him, but he goes to his backyard and finds out through his cook as what is the regular program, what is the routine of the master. Then he says, the person will get up around 5, 5.30, go down to Kaveri for the morning options, and he takes a walk for around half an hour in a small garden. And he'll just go for a stroll, admire the nature, and then come back. And then immediately, 7 o'clock in the early in the morning, he starts his Tamil lesson for his students. And that is, he was able to narrate. So he devises on an idea. And he, he, he is for sure that he'll, uh, the master may not have recognized him. So whenever the master used to go to the garden for his morning stroll, this guy would go and he used to say, sir, he used to do a conductor tour of that garden. He says, sir, this is the latest sapling which, which you planted. Sir, this is the plant which has just come up. This is a small bud which has now become a rose. This flower is yet to blossom. This is a bunch of flowers which has come very, very recently. He used to do a conductor tour whenever this person goes on a stroll. And this also, this master will just nod his head and then smile and then walk away. After a week or so, this master develops interest in this small boy. He said, you're so energetic, so enthusiastic. Before I come, you just come here to take a stroll. And more than that, you've been able to do a conductor tour and you've been explaining things to me in the garden. Where are you from? Then he said, I'm from the, Akras, the other side of the river. Uttamadana, that is the place from where I help. And then he says, do you have any exposure in Tamil? He said, no, sir, I don't, I don't know anything Tamil. Do you want to learn Tamil from me? Then he can't, so he's already created interest. That's what I, I was meaning when I just, it resonated with, with me. The moment he said, you have to generate an interest. He said, no, sir, I have to speak to my parents. No, 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 I, I would like to take you into my fold. I would like to teach Tamil to you. And uh, please bring your father to me. Let me speak. And he said, sir, my father may not be... He'll be tough not to crack. No, no, you just bring him. I'll speak. So he goes and narrates the entire thing to his father. His father goes. The next day he goes. Then he said, uh, his father reluctantly agreed. He said, okay, if you want so, okay, I don't mind sending my son to become a student. That, that's how it starts. The Tamil master And slowly he's been able to come off it. He's been able to learn the classics. And then he becomes a scholar in his own right. And he brings out a lot of manuscripts and he is the one who has been credited with uh, bringing the first five great epics of Tamil into the printing world. And then he is referred to as the grand old man of Tamil, Tamil Tata. So I'm the moment you said, you'll have to develop a curiosity, you'll have to instill a small trigger, a suspense with the other guy. I thought I can narrate this small anecdote which happened in the life of one of the greatest Tamil scholars. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other queries? Any queries more? Yes. Please go ahead. No, okay. Fine, then we'll move on to the next section, which is the online meeting. So what we'll do is we'll quickly run through some of the online do's and don'ts because today many of us are conducting these meetings. So what we need to do, what we should not be doing, how we should do it is what we will look in quickly. First thing first is before the meeting, ensure the mail or, the, or a letter is sent to the people. The mail is sent to all the participants. Okay, you also know a brief about the person who's who are going to come. 
what are they where are they from what they are doing and when you are online first thing is <coughs> start the come in about 10 minutes early and try to talk to the participants this will help you a lot just speak to the participants so that you know where they are from what they are what they are doing and doing and you can build a personal kind of a rapport also with some of the participants number 2 you know when you are in front of the camera ensure there is a light in front of you not behind you there is a light in front of you which is falling on your face so that your face looks bright enough so this is one thing you need to make sure that you are taking care of because if the light is behind you you look like a ghost on the screen the other end so please avoid it ensure the light is in front or from the sides it is focusing coming on to you doesn't have to be focus on you also normal tube light is sufficient for a normal meeting unless you are shooting for something otherwise normal tube lights is more than sufficient to take care of your lighting requirement number 3 is your background because today i am bringing it from a temporary place because the house is under some renovation happening there so ensure that your background is kept clean beautiful <coughs> one of the things you can have is a bookshelf having a bookshelf with two or three plants in the background gives a wonderful message out that again gives a first impression is a positive impression that comes out when you keep it behind you ensure that the bookshelf with few trees plants you have killed it you can say that and also ensure that between you and the height you know you are you cover almost two third of the screen one third is kept back this you will find it very predominantly being used by this news readers if you have seen the news on tv readers they keep that they ensure that two thirds is here and one third is on top kept empty which is again gives you a very nice positive feeling to the eyes because when you bring your screen here you know it doesn't look very comfortable when you keep it here yes it's decent and then always look into the camera to look down doesn't look good you need to looking onto the screen still it is advisable that you look into the camera straight because then the people other end feel that yes they are looking at you the screen is also okay but camera is the best place and yes first thing you need to do is wave your palm so that people know that yes this is friendly hi coming to you it gives you a you build a warm friendly relationship the moment you show your palm and uh, anything else that you have doubts on what do we do on a video call be a good listener no yeah be a good listener yes see uh, the unfortunate thing on a video call is your time span of your att attention is very very <coughs> hardly about 3 to 5 minutes even that is too big even that you get distracted because in a face to face yes you can take on you can have the attention kept but especially when and that when most participants are without their videos their attention span is very very minimal in fact that's one reason why i thought i will have the question and answer session has to go along but once you keep it towards the end you know everything is lost so it is always better to be to keep your audience engaged ask them a few questions ask them to put i in the chat box or yes in the chat box or raise their hands so when people are not on videos you can't do that you can probably ask them in the chat box so these are certain things that you can have for ensuring that you have a very the customers the audience is there with you any doubts any queries anything that you had had a problem while doing this online stuff on on an online platform any specific queries anything that you had experienced usually it is recommended to connect with two devices and keep one muted just in case if one fails at least you can 
get on with the other yes you will have two devices and also have two internet connections one is your uh, wifi and other can be a mobile in case the power goes what do we do switch it so any other any other queries doubts because two screens is important two connections is also important clean one of my presentation the app itself did not work so so the link itself it took long time to update and other thing so anyway it, it sometime it happens uh, yeah technique technology has its own limitations it, it ties you down many times technology has several limitations yes in fact one of the best better ideas is to come early check out everything if everything is in place working fine well we have seen the do's now we will see some of the don'ts which we need to be very very careful about when we meet somebody the first time especially for women you know don't play with your hairs i don't have that so no problem for me but don't be fidgeting with your hairs or with your fingers or nails that sends a different meaning altogether please don't do that <laughs> men ensure that your hair is properly combed it is not very dirty don't be scratching for dandruffs and all that please ensure all that is taken care of but these are simple things which get missed in a hurry men with beard please ensure that it is maintained well because every time you go out to meet somebody there ensure it is in place probably waxing and all that has to be done on a regular basis dirty nails is a big no no my video so my this thing is screen is visible right yeah yeah visible visible fine that dirty nails is a strict no no because whatever i'm giving here is strict no no be very careful about it ensure that your customers don't get repelled by it too much of a makeup is again a big no no many customers are not comfortable when you have so much of makeup teeth dirty teeth is never appreciated please ensure they are kept clean some people teeth may not be shown but even then for some the teeth is whenever you speak it is shown but whichever case it is please ensure it is kept clean don't use a very strong perfume because this actually repels the other person and especially if you walk into a customer who is in a ac room you know the moment you open the room and such a strong comes in <coughs> the customer will not enjoy your company and then also ensure that you use adequate deodorant so that no sweat smell comes out of you so it's a fine balance that you need to maintain there and then of course yes you can you could not say i am cool so i go i am a modern guy and go with a ripped jeans strict no customers will not appreciate it. and also wash your mouth because just after lunch when you go on a call sometimes there could be something sticking on your teeth which the customer will not enjoy looking at you so please wash your mouth well before you go on a call and for women please don't go with your backs exposed not every customer will appreciate it and for men or and for men and women you know when we look into the mirror after dressing we only see the front side we don't look at the back side so that again is bad so please ensure that you see the back side also ensure your tuck and everything is perfectly in place even at the back side but sometimes it's all in the front is fine so the back tail a small tail will hang out the cloth can be coming out which will look very bad shirt you don't have to put an expensive shirt wear an expensive dress but ensure that your dress is not wrinkled it is neat cleanly ironed 
and shoes. Among the first three things people watch is shoes and ensure that it is not dirty. It is clean, sparkling clean. Because shoe, eyes, hands, lips are the first few things that customers see. So be very careful with that. Ensure that the shoe is clean. And please ensure you are on time for the call. Whether it's online, offline, wherever it is, please ensure you are online, you are on time for the call. And people say bubblegum with chewing gum is good. It keeps you calm. It keeps you relaxed. No, not in front of the customer. Chewing gum, cigarettes, and alcohol. All three are a strict no. Because sometimes people in sale, we have a problem. We have two, three bad calls. The next thing we do is we have a cigarette and then go to the next call. And unfortunately, if it is in an AC hall, the customer is sitting and he opens the door and He's a non-smoker and the cigarette smell comes. You have lost the game straight in the first call. So please ensure that you avoid all this. There are a list of about 40 items, but then I think chose the, the few main things which we need to take care of, which are mistakes that generally happens. So any doubts, anything on these? Don'ts. Perfect. Nothing. Sir, uh, this doubt on the dress, sir. Like, you know, when you meet customers, you always uh, dress up a bit more. Um, so especially when you do sales meetings, you know, on the summer, uh, I'm talking about B2B customers. So do you suggest to have the jacket always? Or like, you know, what do you, especially when the customer is not wearing the jacket? See, or when you go to the manufacturing setup? Yeah. Let me put it like this. Jacket is an option. I don't say it is must. Because again, it depends on the company culture. Your company, maybe your company people, uh, they insist that you wear a jacket. For example, people from the hotel industry, they must wear a jacket and go meet the customers. But whatever it is, the dress, I would say you don't have to go for the top brands. Not important. You can go for normal dressing. Ensure that they are comfortable. And again, here, I would say, if you're going to meet a very important customer, don't wear a new dress. Because you never know how well it fits, how well it doesn't fit. So wear a dress that you know it's fitting well, it is comfortable, wear it. Now, if your company, your organization insists on you to wear tie, wear tie. But then again, it depends on the kind of customer. Like <clears throat> in my Xerox days, I used to wear tie. But when I used to go to some government departments working there, I used to be without tie because there they will you know, the moment you go with a tie, you walk in there, you create a barrier. The moment you are without tie, you walk in straight that the relationship is straight away bridged, built. They are okay, comfortable talking to somebody who's like them talking to them. So depends on you and depending on uh, depending on your, uh, your company and the customer, I suggest you can do the dressing. That's your judgment. If you're going to meet a top-notch, the C-suit person, then of course. But I've seen people going in jeans and t-shirt also meeting the C-suit person, people. Because today's Zen X, Zen Z is okay with it. But whatever it is, ensure that you're decently, neatly dressed. Thank you, sir. Have I answered, sir? Okay, yes, sir, so thank you. Yeah. Hello. Yep. Any other doubts? Any any queries? So can I move on? Uh, please, sir. Please go on, sir. Okay. Next, we look at rapport building. Rapport building is, in life, there is a very simple policy, like, likes, like. Now in physics, you would have studied that unlike poles attract. 
right? In physics, we have studied that unlike poles attract, but in life, like poles attract. Now, in your college days, you know, you would have seen people who cut classes, go for movies, are all together as a group. The top mark scholars are generally together as a group. People who play cricket, football, can be seen moving together. So we like people who are like us. <laughs> in fact, if you are in another district, you are from district A, if you are doing your study or work in district B, there if you see people from A, you start liking them. You form a relationship with them, right? However good or bad he is, you do not know, but you immediately form a relationship. So in life, like, likes, like. Right? This is the background based on which the rapport building also happens. Because again, subconsciously, you know, so many things are being read. There is a lot of information going into your subconscious mind, which the conscious mind is not aware of. And the subconscious mind keeps processing it. So when you meet somebody like you, you start to take a liking for that person, which is not known to your conscious mind, but your conscious mind accepts, starts liking you. So the, what happens is that then you start responding in a sync. So normally you see two people, you've seen this couples, married couples who are old. You know, when they speak, you can see both of them, body language moving the same way. They are in sync, actually. There's a feeling of commonality. Yes, you and I are from the same ground. There's a feeling of connection with the, the client will have on you once you build rapport. The communication is much, much smooth and fast. There is, of course, mirroring and matching happening, pacing and leading, which I'll come to later. So this is, in essence, what rapport building is. Any queries on this? Now, first, one thing, one of the most easiest way, one of the easiest way, sorry, any, no, sorry. Okay, one of the easiest way to build rapport is to talk in the volume and the tempo of the person speaks. And the emotion, emotion may not be there, but at least the speed and the tempo at which he speaks. This was beautifully done by Dr. Milton Erickson. He was a psychologist, he's a hypnotherapist. So whenever people come to him, I mean, he from him only, NLP also started. So whenever a patient walks into him and says, oh doctor, this is not going to work, I'm not comfortable, I'm not, nothing is working out for me, what is this? So he says to the patient, yeah, yeah, I know you have worked there, you have worked everywhere, you have seen that everywhere, but today you come to me, I'll ensure things work for you. So he talks in the same language. Immediately the customer's subconscious will, hey, here is somebody like me. Or if the customer says, what doctor, I've seen so many doctors, nothing worked for me. What is the point? Unnecessarily I'm going to so many doctors. Nothing is happening. To him, he immediately says, yeah, I understand your feeling, but you have come to me for the first time. Give me a chance. I will work it out for you. <coughs> so immediately the connection gets built. So in the subconscious mind, says, hey, here is somebody who talks like me. So this is the best and com most comfortable way to do, to build a rapport with a customer. And the customer uses several keywords. There could be words which customer repeat. And you also start using the same keywords. Like I was talking of a word Arpu then, or the customer says, this is fantastic, that is fantastic, this is fantastic. You can also use the word fantastic. Don't say wonderful or don't say lively. Just use the same word. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Now that, that word, same word if you repeat, the customer starts liking you. Oh yes, here is somebody like me. And whether you like it or not, we as customers, you know, when you take customers for a movie, See, when yeah when probably you take a group of people for a film when they see the film what happens some of them will say i like the emotion what was played there some will say i like the picture 
I like the characters. I like the whole lot of movie, the visualization, the way it was taken. And the third person will say, I like the music. So we as human beings are basically in three characters. Three types of people are there. If you study NLP, they go deep into that. One are people who go by what they hear. So they will use things like, I can hear you say that. Uh, I hear you do that. I can feel that sound and all that. That sounds nice to me. There are people who use a lot of visual. You know, I can see you do that. I can see that coming. Or people who, who are more on the kinesthetic, they call it. They are very kinesthetic. They are very emotional. I feel that happening in me. I feel you can do that. So to such people, you also use similar words. In fact, if you want, I can give you the list of words which you can share there. But now for want of time, I'm not doing that. But I can share it if you want it. So people are of three kinds. You can, if you talk in, the, even in the mails, if you read the mail, you can clearly know which type this person belongs to. And you can type your reply using those visual, auditory, or kinesthetic words to the customer. So the customer, somewhere in his subconscious mind, starts connecting with you faster. Mirroring and matching, yes. First thing is the proximity. Please ensure that you don't enter the personal circle of the customer, of the person. The moment you enter, they tend to step back. You know, the whole lot of relationship building, the rapport building gets destroyed there. So ensure that you keep that arm's distance, this distance is kept, so that you don't enter the personal space of the person. That is first important caution to be there. Then, you know, you have seen the Maram's theory, it says 55% is body language of communication. So even here, body plays a big language, big way. So you can do the posture. So how the person sits, how the person stands. For example, if you're sitting with his legs crossed, <coughs> you can also cross your legs. If he's left on right, you can do the left on right. Or the cross mirroring, you can also do right on left. Probably you can put it the same way or a similar way. But then you need to be very careful. The moment customer changes his leg, ah, you change, I will also change. Don't do that. You notice him change, you just understand that slowly, and then a few seconds later, you also casually change to a nearby post. There could be gestures. Like I've been using this way, that way, the gestures. There are some customers tend to use a lot of gestures, either this way, or showing this way, showing that way. You can also slowly do that. Sir, I agree with you. You can do this this way. We can look at it like this. We can look at it that way. Gesture is one way. And then sitting. Even when they sit, you know, you can go, they can sit relaxed back or they can come forward. So you can also, you know, be in the center and move slowly back or slowly forward as how they move. The moment they move back, don't move back immediately. Now they move forward, you also don't move forward. You just do it slowly. They move back and then you slowly move back. Or the customer has got a habit of swinging. You don't swing that fast. You probably do one or two swings every now and then. So that he feels okay. Because he should not, otherwise his conscious mind should not read this. That you are doing it like what he is doing. The moment the conscious mind reads, then he says, okay, this fellow is fooling around with me. So all of this has to be done in a very scientific, slow, systematic way. Eye contact. Maintain that eye contact. And if the customer and don't just stare at him for 10-15 minutes. That doesn't work. The moment customer blinks, looks away, you also blink and then look away for some time and then come back for eye contact. Do this very, very subtly. The customer then will again start looking at you. You come back subtly, look at him. The moment he blinks, you also slowly blink and then look out. So these are games that should run behind your mind. And handshake, again, like I said, do it exactly the way he does it. He presses you hard, you also press him hard. He presses you light, you also press him light. He shakes hard fast, you also shake fast. He the shakes it slow, you also shake it slow. So ensure that when you build Rapu, you are doing things which are exactly the way he does it. That's how it gets built.
and no matching and mirroring is no mirroring and pacing is the same thing that we said doing this hand movement this that it can be same way matching is suppose he moves his right hand you also move your right hand he moves his left hand you also move your left hand or it can be the opposite if he is using too much left hand you can use your right hand no problem he may be a left handed person using too much left hand you can do the same actions using your right hand you may not be comfortable doing your left hand can be the other way around also he might be a right handed you might be a left hand or he could be somebody who's just playing with his thumb you no know, giving pressure like this he must be playing on with a pen nib or something so you can also put your hand here and start playing like this or sometimes the customer will do this you know don't do it for a long time you just do it take it out probably cross your legs <coughs> in front of him then cross your arm after some time so do it in a very very slow subtle way his con just don't do, look at him like this see what he is doing oh he is doing this yeah i am also doing this no never do that do it in a very slow subtle manner as if you are doing it very comfortably if he is leaning back and he is going like this no problem you might feel that he has made a distance with you but you also slowly move back after after a few seconds and then say you don't have to go back fully which is a disrespectful go a little back and be there that's all which is comfortable or come a, then come a little forward you can do the cross mirroring also by we goes back you come forward so that no you don't let that gap come too much between both of you so these are things that we do for mirroring yes so with this i open up for any questions any doubts anything you have i think we are more or less on time sir gopi sir we are on time yes sir yes sir we can we can we can keep the floor open for questions sir yes sir done yeah thank you thank you very much for this wonderful session uh, mr ajit kumar uh, thank you sir so participants you may please unmute and ask your questions please but these are things we need to do day in day out so please be please uh, whatever questions you have you can you can come out we can work it out excellent ses session ajit sir Thank so you, nice sir. of you for having brought lot of uh, minute details which can give success to the sales person not only to the sales person for all of us we been interacting with so many people not necessarily clients or business partners very very useful tips thank you thank you sir please unmute and ask questions no problem any queries anything even which is outside this you can ask i can from what i have not covered also you can ask you have any queries i can i'll try and help you out yeah while we going for a business lunch okay uh, say for example with a client or maybe a, a potential client so do we need to offer the seat first and uh, any specific place we need to ask to sit or how how should we set up the arrangements yeah, yeah. okay now okay fine i got it see that's a very interesting question because when you go for a business lunch <laughs> well you will have to do the etiquette of giving him the first seat and all that but then again you need to be very clear what is going to happen in this during the lunch time will you be having a strong negotiation going on where there could be a lot of agreements and disagreements or you are going to just chat in general okay you need to be careful on these two grounds why i'll tell you if you are just going to chat in general no you can sit opposite to each other and then talk i mean this is useful even when you go for negotiation techniques when you go for negotiation table this will be very useful technique which i'm telling you so you can sit opposite and then talk if there is going to be something which you may not agree there could be some disagreements happening the best place to sit is next to the person not opposite okay and this is useful even when you no know, at home 
if you are going to say break out a bad news to your parents, say you're married or things like that or whatever it is, you're going to break some news like that. Even there, you sit next to them and do it, you know, they will not react so badly. But when it's face to face, the reaction will be very bad. Where the reaction could be bad. But when it is here, next, next seat, you know, there would be a disagreement. Yes, they are not saying no, but the reaction will not be very strong. Because you don't like to face this way and then scream or do things. Yeah, understood. But facing becomes easy. Okay. Also, nowadays, people hug. Okay, after the handshake, they do hug actually. Yeah, that Western culture is coming. I mean, the, the Gen Z and Gen X is into it. So, if that's the rule of the game, I think we'll have to play. We'll have to get used to that. Yeah. Because people of our generation are not used to that. But then, uh, one thing you can also do is touch on the shoulder if, if it is acceptable. Sure. And that has got a very huge impact. Okay. The shoulder touch, you know, gives a much positive, gives a very strong positive vibe. Sure. I hope I've answered you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Good. Sir, it was an excellent session. Uh, I just want to ask you one. Uh, when we say impact and influence, like the customer, uh, how we have impacted or influenced him. So that uh, basically becomes uh, our image in, in his mind, right? The impact or influence. Uh, yes, that depends on our, that depends on our uh, is the image which he carries, right, sir? That's the image that we let him carry of ours is what yeah, let him carry of ours. So how do you differentiate impact and influence? What's the difference? Custom with respect to customer. See, impact influence comes where you know he is uh, willing to accept whatever you say. Okay. Influence comes there where he is agreeable to what you say. You are able to influence him. Impact is he has got a positive mindset about you. So impact adds on to influence. So impact is stronger. In fact, if you have a good impact on him. If he has got a positive impact about you, the influence becomes so. Ba so basically, if he understand, if he has got the impact, does it mean a sales closure? Need not, not be. Need not. Need be. not be in a B two B sales section. It can help you. Okay, sir. Because a sales closure in a B two B depends on so many people, so many factors. Okay. Yeah. But yes, if it is he, if he is the man, man means the person who has the money, authority, and he. And he's taking the call, and you have an impact on him. It will work. Okay. If it's slightly a complex call, I mean a big, big call, uh, complex sales, then yes, it will help you to pick it up. Okay, sir. So thank you, sir. It was a very nice, detailed session. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Chaitanya, what are you doing? Where is it? Where is it? Anybody else? Any clarification? Sangeeta, Sangeeta any questions? Uh, I don't have any questions, but I completely love the session. Beautiful thoughts and points to take away. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Dr. Adip. Thank you, well, Mr. Kopi. Thank you. Uh, thanks, thanks. Thank you. Dr. Ajit, sir. Sangeeta, I requested her to join. She's joining all the way from Mumbai. Thanks, Sankita. Thank you, Major. Thank you, Major. Yeah, Ramesh, go on, Ramesh. Uh, sir, it was a wonderful session. Sir. It was really uh, very interesting. Uh, you know, again and again, even though everybody thinks they know all these things, when we listen, uh, there's still there's a lot of refreshing points, uh, you know. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your perspective. It was really wonderful. My question is, you know, for... Uh, um, you are a sales consultant and you're helping uh, corporates, you know, do you help the startups or what type of help you do for startup companies? Can you share some perspective on that? Okay, for startups, a couple of things I do, even before they start up, I work with them as a before, at the beginning stage itself. Because 
you know there are certain basic things if only if those questions are answered i would recommend them to start the business because the 5w and h is very powerful what when where why how and if you can get that clear to your customer about your customer who's your customer why he has to buy your product when you when you buy your product where all he can buy your product from who else can supply buy the product and if you can if you have a clear answer for all these questions who's your customer why should he buy from you where he can pick up when he can pick it up when all he can pick up who all who all else can he go and pick it up from so where will be your usp why so this 5w7h if you can answer on the certain basic parameters of business the 5ms i mean i would put it like this very simple you do the matrix of 5ms with this 4w's and 1h you get the answer for all this you have 70% 80% answer yes you can go start playing your game because some questions will be answered only when you play the game but before that if you have a clear answer to those questions then i help them as to how they should approach the customer what they should talk what they should not talk how they how they should do it when they should do it so all those things come in there is that or you want me to get into more detail uh, sir that is the on the ongoing basis see ongoing basis one i uh, work with them to one with the sales team to ensure that they are doing the right jobs two i also ensure that other things in the business are in place the basics are in place because con because uh, as a uh, what happens is as a entrepreneur you are full left right center by so many things you know your focus is out of the basics but what i do is i just come sit i only question on the basics whether they are there in place whether your money flow is in place if you are going to invest what is it how is it going to impact your money flow where is it going to come from how is it going to come because you may see a need and you may jump in which is very temporary and that cost could eat out your profits that you have taken now so my game is only to sit check on the basics to ensure that everything is in place and keep moving that's it and of course being from the sales background i work with the sales team closely or if there's no sales team how they sell how they generate leads the marketing team because end of the day is how you communicate to your customer so what kind of customer i mean what kind of communication the customer like how they expect so we do research on that and then work out on the communication because Today, invariably, what you say is, "I have this, 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 this." The customer is not interested. He is looking for his W I I F M. What is in it for me? I'll give you a classical case. When Apple was launched, Apple Four, iPhone was launched. Steve Jobs never went about saying that this has got a processor, this has got a memory, this has got a hard disk, and all that. Nobody knows what it was. He only spoke what the phone can do for you. and they didn't have to advertise for the iphone 1 and 2 they didn't have to advertise it just got sold out because steve jobs just answered one question to the customer what is it in it for you on this phone i have so much of ram i have so much of hard disk no <coughs> in fact if you see all the chinese brands will give you all the same answer okay. sir i think uh, in this uh, image uh, you have al also covered brand also right sir the brand of the person or the company and product, right uh, personal branding i have not gone in deep but it's the image which you carry yeah personal branding is a different ball game altogether where because whether you like it or not you are a brand okay because you ask your friend what he thinks about you he will tell you yes so you are a brand you like it or not <clears throat> so how well you communicate that and how good a brand are you or what is your brand supposed to be is a different i mean uh, rules of the game are very different maybe sometime later we can talk about that in lengthen in fact uh, <clears throat> i run a youtube channel called sales is always fun okay sir i repeat it is called as sales is always fun sales is always okay there i have done two episodes on personal branding 
Okay. So where I even talk as to how you can check what your brand is, how what should be your brand, what should be your Nike. Because today the problem is the whole world is doing something and I want to do that. But your true passion could be something else. Yes. So what you are supposed to be and what you want to be could be different. So we talk of all that in that in that uh, two videos. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Incidentally, first impression is also there for about 10-12 minutes video, short video. Okay, sir. Okay. Sales is always fun is the video. Channel name. Any other doubts? Any clarity? Anyone Any else has a question? I think we're done, sir. <clears throat> so thank you very much, Mr. Ajit Kumar, for joining us on a Sunday morning. And thank you, sir. Pleasure is mine. So we stay in touch and. Uh, sure. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks thank you. A lot. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. I hope it was useful. Definitely, it was very useful. We are, we are, we are, we are a lot of takeaways from it. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much you. for joining. Thank you.